Now, is the age of consent a biblical concept? The age of consent. <laughs> now, when we look at uh, this one legally, the age of consent is a legal term that basically refers to the age at which a person can legally agree to marriage or a, a sexual activity. And the age of consent varies from country to country. And in the United States, for example, it varies from a state to state. The age of consent in, uh, in uh, Nigeria, some, for example, is 11. Where else the legal cons age of consent in South Korea is about 20. Islamic law puts the age of consent at nine, but only within the uh, confines of marriage. In the United States, for example, the age of consent ranges from 16 to 18. And uh, in Kenya, it's about the age of uh, 18, all right? And the median age of consent worldwide is uh, 16 years. Now, sexual relations with uh, someone under the age of consent is considered uh, statutory rape and the offender may be prosecuted regardless of whether or not the act was consensual and uh, the age of consent is not a biblical term but laws establishing an age of consent reflect to a biblically supported desire to protect children in the hebrew culture of biblical times the expectation of maturity came quite early in life Boys at the age of 13 usually began uh, apprenticeships with older male rel uh, relatives as they learned a trade. Once a girl had passed puberty, she was considered marriageable and could be betrothed to an older man who could provide for her, betrothal being different from actual marriage. All right? When ancient Israel took census or called for men to form an army, the minimum age was around 20. We can see this in the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And also the book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 14 says, Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. And also Second Chronicles 25, verse 5, it says, Moreover, as... Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds according to the houses of their fathers throughout all Judah and Benjamin and he numbered them from 20 years old and above all right 20 years old and above and uh, we see the purpose for age of consent laws is to protect the innocent and the innocence and the maturity of children and a sexual activity is a life-altering event, one that uh, God designed to consummate a lifelong commitment in marriage. Because God said in the book of uh, uh, Genesis 2 verse 24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 7 verse 39 says the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth but if her husband be dead she's at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord so the age of consent also helps protect children from sexual predators who want to be uh, to exploit them in fact campaigns against human trafficking have historically pushed for a higher age of consent as a means of protecting vulnerable youth and encouraging social stability age of consent our laws give uh, governments more power to arrest predators and stop exploitation of minors. While the Bible does not define an age of consent, the concept is biblical. Sex should never be forced, that is, non-consensual. And those at risk of exploitation must be protected. It is biblical to restrain the actions of pedophiles to prevent the victimization of children and deter sexual abuse in general. Age of consent laws help do all of that. Parents have a responsibility to prepare their children for marriage and sexual expression that honors God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, the Bible tells parents to bring children up in the training and instruction of the Lord. 
And when God's plan for sexual purity is valued within the family, a child can grow up knowing that the age of consent is that moment in an adulthood when he or she has the wisdom to choose a spouse for better, for worse. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and to subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmwoki.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.